Olga Anikina. I'm a family medicine uh, physician. I'm a board, cert uh, board certified in family medicine. I will speak in English, so uh, people who speak Russian, люди, которые говорят по-русски, вы можете сгруппироваться, что um, переводчик вам будет переводить. Um, I will speak in English, so I just say to my fellows who speak Russian so they can sit together. So a uh, translator will translate for them. Um, I work as a hospitalist, as a traveling hospitalist, and also I'm doing uh, moonlighting in urgent care. First time um, I was introduced to Skinner in 2001. Um, I read in the newspaper about this fairy tale. Oh, there is a magic machine who can treat everything. And you know, as you know, all doctors are skeptical. So, oh, that's a kind of fishy. But we're also very curious. So I decided to visit this institution and interview the patient in my own self. So on that time, a Skinner cost um, annual salary for Russian physician. So it was a lot of money for me to decide to buy it. But, um, you know, I met a patient, I spoke with them, and the one patient kind of turned my head around. Um, I'm kind of will tell you the her story. This was a 46 years old female who had a brain injury many years ago. After that, she developed uh, um, seizures, epilepsy. She was a um, businesswoman, so she has to work with the numbers, she has to come with the speeches, meetings, and the anti-seizure anti medications really affect her effectiveness, productiveness. And one time she heard about this magic machine and she decided to use it. Well, unfortunately, when you're treating uh, seizures, on that time, you have to shave uh, your hair to achieve a uh, maximum effect. Well, what she's losing? Not much. Hair always will really grow. Really grow, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes when I speak too fast, you know, I'm kind of swallowing the words. Um, anyway, she had uh, 10 sessions, and at the time when I met her, it was already two years, and she was seizure free. That was uh, her story. On the time when I met her, she was treating the cellulitis. So um, when I believed to her and all patients, I bought the machine, I went to the training, and since I've been using. So I will share some experience I had in uh, my life and what kind of diseases I treat. So I will tell you the cases. Case number one, this is a 63-year-old um, female with a pneumonia. She had an allergy to over 30 antibiotics with an anaphylaxis. So she was scared to use any antibiotic. She scared medical doctors. Well, that was a time when I just started to use a scanner. So every patient was unique to me. I didn't know, can I help them? I will fail it. I will kill them, and I'm a medical doctor, so that was scary. I say, okay, I will try. <laughs> so what we use, we use the three pathways. I always start with the three pathways. Um, but what I do first, so, and I think that will be good advice. Sometimes we don't have enough time, we skip a time, we do not interview the patient. So my advice to you, always start with an interview ask what general problem has the patient. So then you know what you're dealing with. What kind of lawyer you will have it. Number two, ask a patient, what do they want to achieve during this treatment and after this treatment? And rule number three, I always take a patient only with acute disease or flare. If they're on a chronic disease and they're stable, I will never touch them because this will cause a field flare and the patient will think that's a scanner cause it. So, and you know already about homeostasis and why it's happened. But anyway, we started the three pathways. I did the bubbles a few times a day. We did the palms, we did work on her belly. 
Oh, well, and, 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 and the most important, since I'm a physician, we did the x-ray before and we did the x-ray after. After seven sessions, her pneumonia got resolved. Oh my gosh, I was scared. She had a fever, she was sweating, but she was very positive. She believed in me more than I believe in myself. So that was good. So case number two. So during this, she didn't receive any other time? No antibiotics, no Tylenol, nothing. And in fact, you know, I found amazing, and I always tell this to my patients, Tylenol takes 30 minutes to one hour to decrease your fever and has a side effects. Ibuprofen is the same. It takes five to 10 minutes using a scanner in your armpits in order your fever will go down. You will just perfuse the sweat, you feel better, and no side effects. The most important, no side effects. The first rule as a physician is do not harm. I always remember that, do not harm. You will help or not, but do not harm. So, um, case number two. Um, so, you know, as you also already told how we work with the skin. So I just use the same rules for every patient. So interview first, what to do, and then using the paint, and use a find a zone of small asymmetry, and then um, diagnostic one. Her question was, what frequency under the armpits? Oh, so under the armpits, I'm using the modulation. Modulation, so depends, yeah, so if you are working with a fever, so it's for acute disease, you can do, you know, modulation three, uh, three to one, two to one, one to one. And when you're doing a one to one, I usually do three or five minutes. You also, you can do, you know, if it's a patient been already ill for a while, you can start not with a, just three to one, you go three to one, three to four, three, oh, what is it I'm saying? So yeah, so you go up and down. So depends, you know, there is, I think it's almost like, I mean, I've been told use for acute diseases going just down, three to one, without going up and down. But I'm using both, so I don't see any harm from that, all individually. But children, um, of course, they react faster because their nerve system, the nerves that don't have a myelinization completely yet. So. That's work much faster, especially in children. They don't like pills, and you know you don't want to kind of poison your children with it. And the scan, this is just uh, the best device for them. Any question about this case? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What frequency are you modulating? Because you have different frequencies you can modulate. Okay, so you can use ninety. Ninety. Mm -hmm. Ninety point nine. Mm-hmm. 15, I use a, I have, a, you know, I still use a, the first oldest device, one of the oldest. So mine is like, like normal uh, um, resistance 59.9. So, and the newest one is 90. So you can use either one. In what time frame did you do those seven treatments for that pneumonia? Well, that was my mom. <laughs> so I treat her every day. Right. So, but um, I think she had a marrow reaction in a short day. And then, uh, you know, what I learned, more acute disease, much faster you will develop a marrow reaction because your body already kind of on the top. You don't need to put much energy and then only you will just do better and better and better. Which you compare with the chronic diseases, you are right now you're here and then you're making a flare because you know when we treat with antibiotics antibiotics only suppress the disease and the skinner it just make a homeostasis so if it's an acute disease your body is here it's everything acute so you just kind of go down so all patients are so happy you you got the 100 percent satisfaction so, you know, kind of remember that. So case number two, 75 years old female came uh, with a stroke she um, had two weeks ago. 
And um, result of the stroke, she had a left side weakness and she has a numbness on this side of her body and then she starts developing a contract uh, contraction um, in her hand. And more, she had a blindness in her eye. But remember, it was two weeks. So it's still kind of cute for stroke. Well, again, this is I was still working in my first year. <laughs> Every patient was unique. I said, okay, let's try. So again, I did a zone of small asymmetry. I did the three pathways. I walk on her hand. So what's happened in the first session? Her hand start feeling in a day one. She says, my gosh, I feel it, I feel it. That was amazing. So she was happy, I was even more happier. Then contraction is gone after three days. So she started moving. She was not, she was able to make a fist. Day seven, her eyes start seeing. So I thought she didn't have an object of her nerve. Maybe she has a hematoma in her eye, was a present on her optic nerve. So that was amazing. She was so happy. I was even more happier. So that was, that was a very good case. So case number three. I had a 37 year old female who had a fibroids on her uterine. Um, and she came to me, she was crying, and she says, well, my OBGYN just did an ultrasound and says, um, I need a surgery. Do you think you can help me? I say, I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> so they say, I shoot, and the scanner shoots, so let's try. So we did a seventh session. As I've been taught during my training, when you work with the hormonal things, like fibroids, there is no acute um, complaints. There's a no pain most of the time. So we did the seven sessions before her menstrual period and seven sessions after. No skipping a day, but when she had a menstrual period, you just skip that time. And when you work with a um, hormonal system, you have to tell your patient, do not expect a, a result right away. So you have to do ultrasound or any diagnostic procedures to see what scan I did maybe in two, three months. So then it will be the best result. Because body still have a memory. You work, but the body is still working. Homeostasis is still happening in your body. Your body still cure. You just give the information, kind of wake up your resource in your body, and then body will finish all. So two, three months later, she went to her OBGYN, and then she, you know, but. OBGYN, so any doctors have so many patients, they don't remember who is who and why they came. So she did her ultrasound again and she says, why did you come to me today? She says, well, three months ago you told me I need a surgery. And she says, I can't believe it. I will not believe it if it's won't be me who did this ultrasound. But I did it, I have my documentation, and yes, I did say to you that I offer you a surgery. So her fibroids get shrink to the point that she didn't know, uh, she doesn't need a surgery anymore, and she never had a surgery. So that was a great result. So again, you know, I work everywhere. So there is like no, not only in the belly. I always start again, three pathways. I do a lot of belly, palms, work in the hormonal zones, everywhere, they all. You know what I find out, I had a multiple different level of training a scanner. But level one, actually it's enough to do almost the same. Maybe it will take longer, but it will take a less time. But you will get a good result. So, and happy patients. Um, next case. Next case, it's a four-year-old boy who had an antiviral infection. So when I saw him, he had a fever 101. So for uh, Russian speaking, it's about uh, 40 degree um, Celsius. And uh, he had the abdominal pain, diarrhea, he was vomiting. 
and you know, work with a, a pediatric patient with the children, it's initially could be difficult because you have to get this trust. You have to talk with them and let them touch you. So he did not let me touch with the skin, it's a metal. He says, no, 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 no. Okay, I say, how about I will just put my hand on you? Is it okay? He says, okay. <laughs> so I hold with one my hand an electrode of the skinner, and with my hand, my another palm, I treat him in his armpits, I treat him in his forehead, and I treat him in his belly. Fever went down. The effect, the same. It's worked for you. So fever went down, he feel better, abdominal pain resolved, and he starts smiling, and he develop a trust. So with the viruses, sometimes, you know, it just goes like that. So a couple hours, his symptoms come back. And that time, he allowed me to use a skinner and electrodes. So next day, he wake up with no fever, no nausea, no vomiting, and it was just healthy boy. So we were happy. So next case, 46 years alcoholic male with alcoholic uh, pancreatitis. So this guy, he had a binge drinking maybe for two weeks nonstop. And uh, his wife took him to ER. He left ER after three hours against of medical advice. But then he was not able to eat. He developed hallucinations. He already go into alcohol withdrawal and plus pancreatitis. He had a fever 104. Uh, his wife called me at 10 p.m. and just begged me. And I say, no, 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 no. He left the hospital. I cannot do that. So, but you know, you never can say no, I guess. <laughs> I work on him for four, three, four hours. You know, he was almost unconscious. He was not able to talk. So I work, at this point, I started to work with a, a, a small asymmetry, and then I did a, a stereognosis on his belly. That's why it took me so long, because I thought, well, that's a complicated case. He's very sick. But after three, four hours, when I finished to work on him, he opened his eyes and he says, I want to eat. Do you have some food? <laughs> his fever was down. So it took me another five days until he will, he will come back baseline, his pain completely resolved. So, and we didn't use any Ativan, no any other medication, not for withdrawal, not for pancreatitis. And uh, if you know, in acute pancreatitis actually, um, food is contraindicated because of um, you know the enzymes will uh, get activated, but it was a it was a very good result. So next case, yes. Um, so you you know initially first time when I bought a skinner, I didn't use a blanket. But then I heard this uh, stories, and I heard that uh, when you're using a blanket and skinner, you will achieve much faster result and better result. So now, yes, I use for each patient, I use a, I use a blanket. So this is a kind of part of skinner therapy. And uh, in fact, you know, I rarely use a skinner for myself as uh, most practitioners probably only something acute. But you know, I work long hours. I work as a hospital. I work 12 plus hours sometimes a day, and you know, I just come to home. I'm completely tired. Only I have energy. Just get to the blanket, <laughs> fall asleep, get my relaxation tape, and 30 minutes later, or how many minutes? I say 30, but whatever's happened, I wake up and I can move again, and I, I'm just a brand new penny again. So, <laughs> so blanket, yes. How long do you use the blanket for yourself? Because isn't there a generally a time limit to use the blanket? So usually recommend 30 minutes. But usually when I use for myself, I just fall asleep. In the blanket? Yes. All of your body? Right. So 
no, but I don't sleep eight hours, so I fall asleep and I wake up in the 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, whatever I wake up. And it, right, so. <laughs> Right, so I think a body knows when you wake up. So no, it's not over, not through the night. So next case, 32 years uh, old female, she developed five um, fibroid cysts in her arm after the insect bite, which is common, maybe you saw that. So she went to the surgeon and he recommends um, surgical treatment and remove the cyst. She says, well, you know, I'm a woman. I don't want an extra scar. Do you think we can do that? I say, I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> I always say that. So we just work only on modulation. And um, again, this did went away, not right the way. Uh, maybe we had a 10 session, I think, 7 to 10. I don't remember exactly. But it's decreasing the size and become completely non-tender on palpation, did not bother her anymore, but it's uh, completely resolved maybe in one, two months. Okay. So next case, 34 years old female with onychomycosis. Do you know what everyone knows is it? It's a fungal involvement of the nails. So as if um, medical um, doctors we treat, it treats a, a fungal infection of the nail from three to six months with the lamazil, which is a very, very hepatotoxic medication. And then sometimes it's unsuccessful. And uh, you know, you have to, after three months, check your liver enzymes to, you know, to start a course of lamazil. So this patient had only one toenail involvement and she had uh, some skin. Um, and sometimes probably I use a scanner off of label because I'm a doctor, I'm a kitty, so I want to try. And I use a Lamazil cream topically. I put around your skin and on your nail. So no nail polish. You have to remove a nail polish. And again, just work on modulations. After three sessions, she disappeared. I'm calling her, say, What's happened? Are you, are you changed your mind? She says, no, that's all gone. I say, really? I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. So, but she was very happy because I did not promise her anything. I say, I don't know. Next case is 25 years old female with lupus erythematosus. This patient was on chronic steroids. She was taking a prednisone 10 milligrams a day. And she came with a flare, which was good. I was happy that it's a flare. Did I treat lupus before? No. Did I know it will help her? No. I did not promise anything. I said, I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> they say it will. So we start working again. So again, you say, what is it? I do almost the same. So I start what the major uh, complaints they have. Whatever hurts, if it's the joints hurt, you work on more on the joints, on the fine and small asymmetry. Always listen to your patients. Always listen to them. Just, you know, there is a, be individually, because every person is different, so you have to work with each person. And uh, we did the same, we did the three pathways, we work a lot on the hormonal zones, we work on your abdomen. We not only take it off your flare, but we decrease the prednisone dose to five milligrams from 10. How much time? 10 sessions. On that time, I was kind of put, everyone I say, you need a 10 sessions. Because I didn't know yet. So sometimes it's take less. I mean, they say, you know, I don't need any more. I feel fine. I get better. But with the scanner, again, there is a no, no magic number. Remember, walk with a patient, get better, you resolve a problem, stop. That's enough. Um, so um, she was happy. She was taking, you know, this, nobody likes the prednisone um, side effects. This is people, you know, get the moon phase, obesity, and, uh, and the skin problems. So she was very happy. She was a young girl. So next. Did you treat any other? 
No, actually, you know, for some reason, there are so different people, such a kind of big diversity with a different diseases. So no, I never treat lupus anymore. But in this point, I just want to tell you, I had one unsuccessful story in my life, only one. And this was a scleroderma. It's also a um, connective tissue disorder, which autoimmune. There is a no medicine which cure scleroderma or lupus in the world. And uh, this girl, she didn't have any active complaints. She has no complaints. She was on her baseline, but she and her husband, they read in the newspaper about it and they decided to try. And again, I say, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I don't think we have to start right now because you have no flair, but he says, she doesn't have a flare, never. We just want to try to do any difference or not. So we did the 10 sessions, and there was no difference. But again, maybe, you know, I spoke with the, um, Ravenko about it case uh, many years later. And he says, well, probably you did not work. You did not, your knowledge wasn't good enough yet to help her. But she was, you know, she wasn't disappointed or anything. It didn't get worse, it didn't get better. This was only one unsuccessful case in my entire life, working with a Skinner. So, next case, dog bite. Two years ago, I went uh, back to Russia and I got uh, beat by uh, a dog. So it was the last day, I was actually on my way coming back from Russia to United States. And uh, uh, my dog just kind of, I don't know how he gone from the leash, but and he jumped under the truck on the highway. So I tried to get him off from the highway and he was already in agony and he beat me because he was in pain. So I had this open wound dirty, bleeding, I can see my ligaments, and I have no insurance, and I have to go back to United States. I have to take 20 hours of train to Moscow, and then fly for 15 hours in the airplane. Oh gosh, that was terrible. But I had my skinner, what else I need, <laughs> right? I wore the wound, I put the skinner on my skin, and treat it. With modulation, I did uh, um, just regular treatments. And I just want to show you two scars. This scar I got when I was 12 years old, medically treated by the doctors. This is a scar two years ago I treated with a skinner. It was like that. I have a, um, actually uh, a person who can confirm, and she saw the, what kind of wound I had. And since it's almost a lunch time, and I don't want to take too much attention, you guys are already tired, I'm going to tell you my last case. It was a horse. So I had a friend, she's a medical doctor, she's an occupational therapist. Uh, she had the horses. And I will ask you to come here and tell the story. I think you know you want to hear from the first person who can tell their own story. Betty Ann Cohen. I don't have to come up here. Well, you have to, as they will not hear you, right? How many treatments Well, since I had my machine, I want to heal it as soon as possible. I just did whatever I feel like. I just did a few in a day. I had to yell at her every day to do it. No, but it was after all. I'm talking about an acute. But when it gets better, yes. So I think here's a microphone you can okay. use. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. So at the time, Olga happened to be staying at my house and I have horses. And we had two injured horses. One, um, when my young, my young horse had, uh, had an accident, had gouged her leg, and about two weeks later, in the lower leg, she had about a, a three-centimeter hole, it was almost a rectangular hole. Abscess. That went, yeah, well, it, it opened up. It's and it was, an abscess, It was yeah. probably about two centimeters deep. Uh -huh. and, um, and then uh, another horse at my house, Lua, who belonged to a friend of mine, 
had sustained an injury as well. And that horse had a history of making proud flesh. So she actually got the horse very inexpensive because she had a large lump on her leg from an injury when she was young. And the way she healed was to make a very big scar that stood out. Um, so it was a big blemish. And so Olga treated both horses every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. And, um, and they both healed up really well. And the, the scar on the young horse that makes the big scars is much smaller than the previous one. And my horse healed up uh, a hole in her leg very quickly in the course of about two weeks, I guess. And I've been using my scanner since then for musculoskeletal issues with the horses and, and with my dog for an ACL tear. And they've been very effective. So um, horse with Betty Ann had uh, initially had the injury which become an abscess and had a, maybe like one inch or more length hole in her leg. I use a vaginal rectal electrode and actually I put in this hole and this is how we treat it. And then after that, we just put a wet, dry dressings and wrapped around. And does this hole get completely closed in which time? A couple of weeks. It, couple it was, it, there weeks. was a tiny bit that lingered. It was, it was amazing. That was an amazing story. And then um, it was a time to me to leave from Betty Ann's house and says, what I'm going to do? How I'm going to do? Who going to treat me? Who going to treat my horse? I say, well, I think this is a time for you to get your own device and treat your horses and go to the seminar and treat it. Thank you very much. So on the end of my presentation, I just want to kind of summarize the rules. Iosif uh, Semikatov already spoke about it. So rule number one, treat a patient. Number two, interview a patient. Remember, here and now, if you will just treat acute conditions, you will have a successful stories only. So I think that's it. Do you have any questions? So beside that, of course, I treat all. Uh, I <laughs> well, I have uh, all attachments. Yes, yeah, so I have all kind of attachments, but I use a second device, 97.4, 97.5, something like that. Yes, 97.5, that's what I have. Yes, I do have 97.5. Huh? No. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I. This is exactly, I bought a 97.4, and then um, six months later, um, I drop it, it gets broken, and I upgrade it to 97.5. So, and um, when I treat a horse, actually a horse one time, just kick it out, my device flew a few feet away, still alive. <laughs> I just, I never upgrade, it's all great, and then, you know, well, today or this time, actually, I'm going to buy a new new device. Oh, it's a Russian bear. I mean, it is a Russian bear, and everybody's laugh at my machine, but I love it. I mean, you know. That's one of the best machines ever made. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I like it very much, so. Um, so fibromyalgia patients, I mean, I'm just saying do not treat chronic conditions where they don't have active complaints. Fibromyalgia patients are very successful stories. You know, fibromyalgia patients are very complicated patients. It's, it's, a, it's a neurosensory and the pain mostly inside of the brain, the sensation. That's why a medical doctor, they, can, they cannot find a reason why it's happened and they're not successful in that. But if you will use a um, scanner for fibromyalgia and you don't have to even work in diagnostic one and just work on a small um, asymmetry and use a blanket, I think you will be successful. And I think fibromyalgia patients, you should advise them to get a home on device so they can help them. Because, you know, this is kind of chronic condition. Anything?
anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me.